Why not? You guys know I love Survivor. I thought, let's do it. I mean, I know I am definitely not a Survivor YouTuber, but I thought it'd be fun. You know, I don't care. This uh, doesn't get a lot of views, but I want to do it anyway because you guys know I love Survivor. Um, <laughs> I just got a PC update. That's cool. During my oh my goodness, <laughs> wow. But, uh, I don't know, should, should we wait a bit, or should we start? Actually, I'll, I'll give you a little explanation. All 40 seasons I have watched, you know, I've watched every single season. That's pretty, actually, I'm going to do something quick. I'm just going to, I don't know if I'm doxing myself right now. Oh, uh, whatever. All right. Oh, what I just realized. <laughs> maybe, maybe that gives away a video i don't know you might guys might be wondering why i have banjo kazooie um but all right let's go so we have uh the the tier list you have one through 40 uh i guess let's get right into it i don't care i know a lot of people haven't watched survivor but if you haven't um Oh no, let's get right into it. So we got the first season, uh, Survivor Borneo, which actually doesn't say Borneo. It was actually just called Survivor. I think it was actually called Survivor Palutica. Uh, hmm. Oh, no, definitely not. If I'm looking at this critically, right? If I'm looking at this at this critically, so like look looking at other seasons. Ah, uh, man, I think it. I think it gets a B. I think it gets a B. And look, it it obviously it started it started the season. It, I mean, it's okay. I'm not putting it. It started it started Survivor. So obviously, I, I don't know, man. Uh, hmm. Okay, you know what? It has one of the best casts, and that's really impressive because it's the first season. I mean, Richard Hatch, Rudy Bosch. I mean, rip, obviously, rest in peace, Sue Hawk. Say say what you will about her now. I mean, back then, obviously, a great, great survivor. One is a C tier. Okay, no, that's a bit harsh. I, I'm. I, it's between these two. I honestly, I know a lot of people like the older seasons. I prefer the new ish -er seasons. I, I might have to move it down to a B. Okay, yeah, it hasn't aged well, but you gotta like realize at the time, you know, some of the stuff they said there was, was okay. I mean, it, even though Rudy says a lot of stuff that isn't really good nowadays it's, it's he's so funny he's like i like like you know when he says like you know i like rich because rich is obviously gay and he says not in a homosexual of course that is so funny that is that is so funny i don't care what anyone says it's so funny um obviously richard hatch if he hadn't won that season i don't think survivor would still be around richard hatch was way ahead of his time Oh yeah, Jervis too. How did I forget Jervis? Jervis obviously in season twenty-seven is great. We'll get to him later. It has one of the best casts ever. Uh, probably not one of the best winners. There's still a bunch of stuff that you know Rich could. You know he has a bunch of flaws with this game, but for season one, Rich is an amazing winner. And I yeah, like no offense to Kelly, but if Kelly wins that season, I don't think Survivor is, has a forty season. That uh, so A gets a B. Australian Outback. It's between these two. So Australian Outback, right? I th the cast is still really good. I still really like the cast. I think the, the cast is still pretty good for that. But the post-merge of Survivor, the Australian Outback, is probably one of the slowest post-merges in Survivor history. It's so slow. It is so slow. And especially the finale. If you guys don't know, in Survivor, there's a final two. That's how many people are at the end two. And the finale starts with three people. So you get an, a, a two-hour premiere where only one person gets voted out. I don't know why. They, also, there's 42 days instead. It has probably one of the slowest post-merges ever. And it got really boring to watch at some points. And obviously, you have Michael Scoopin from this. And you have you know Jeff Varner from this, who are two pretty problematic people in Survivor now. Obviously, you know, the Jeff Varner stuff we'll get to in season 30, uh, 34. And Michael Scoopin is just a horrible guy. 
to, to begin with. So I think it gets C tier, but Colby Donaldson, Tina Weston, obviously great characters, great survivors. Colby's one of my favorite. Let's get to Survivor Africa. I th- I think out of the first three seasons, I think Africa's the best one, but I don't know if I should just put it above Survivor Borneo or if I should put it in A tier. Obviously, Ethan comes back at Winners at War as the early season that, uh, for Winners at War. Uh, let's, we can have a bunch of characters too. Ethan, Big Tom, Lex. There's so many good characters. I think Clarence, I don't know how Clarence hasn't come back. I think he's one of like the best merch boots ever. But I do think it is the best out of the first three seasons, but I don't know if I should put it at A or B. That That's... <laughs> I mean, there's obviously, like, Lex getting mad over him getting one vote is is amazing. Um, <laughs> but, let's, Africa's an A, yeah. Uh, I, I think I'm going to go A. Obviously, you got Lex, Big Tom, Ethan. I think T-Bird is pretty underrated. Like, I don't know how she hasn't come back yet. Uh, I don't think, there really isn't a dud besides, like, maybe the first three votes. Obviously, uh, Frank is really funny. With Brandon, with the Brandon and Frank stuff is really funny. As you know, Brandon, you know, definitely being gay, and then like Frank Stare, the older guy. The the Silas boot is really satisfying. It's a, you know, it's an A. But Marquesas, I know a lot of people like Marquesas. I think it is. Mm, I think it's slightly worse than Australian Outback. Obviously, yeah, Boston Rob is from this season, who obviously Boston Rob is pretty good, right? Uh, I think Giuseppe as a winner is okay. I think she's kind of underrated, but I don't think she is is the best winner, actually. Probably from the first three seasons, I mean, Rich is obviously the best winner for the first couple of seasons. It just, I, I don't know what it is about Marquesas. It just it feels slow. Uh, but obviously, the first ever big move happens in this season with them flipping on the row two four, and so that that's pretty cool. Like the bur- the the first like big flip happens in this season where they yeah flip on the row two four. That's cool. Yeah, C tier. Yeah, uh, I yeah I think it's C tier. I think it is a C tier season. Uh, Boston Rob, like I said, is from this season, but not a lot of remember people besides like Kathy. She she's good. I don't know how John hasn't come back. I think John's pretty underrated. You know, second merge boot. He was obviously the figure out of that alliance until they uh got turned on. It's a C tier. Thailand. Okay, wait. I gotta make a new tier. Hold up. Hold up. Yeah, it's a Pagani. Yeah. Thailand's the worst season of Survivor. <laughs> Thailand is the worst season of Survivor. I don't care what anyone said. The winner, you know, I get, the winner is good. I think, yeah, Brian Heideck's good. Obviously a horrible human being, but Brian's a good winner. This is the worst season of Survivor. Every single other season of Survivor is watchable. Thailand is not watchable. Thailand's the only season when I was watching, I actually stopped watching and skipped to another season. Because it was that bad. Thailand is the worst season of Survivor. I mean, Clay's funny. I sometimes, most sometimes his joke land. It's such a dark season, and obviously the stuff with Brian Heidick, you know, getting revealed like what he said to Ken during the season. I'm not gonna say because it it's like it's really bad, but it, it's such a dark, boring season. It's super slow. Shean's probably the best. Shean's definitely like better in All Stars, but she gets taken out early anyway. It's bad but but and there's also like a rumor i don't know if you guys ever heard of this that talent was actually like the second season made but because they thought it was so bad they didn't air it i don't i don't think that's true but they rebound in survivor amazon survivor amazon is better than borneo um uh, the, the stripping for peanut butter is pretty funny uh rob Sestanillo is in this season that's cool i think rob Sestanillo is one of the probably one of the better strategies or cl- Close to the best strategist, probably he might be from the first seven, eight seasons. Rob sees great. There's n- there's not really a dud in this cast besides like a I don't know. Butch wasn't that great, I guess. But it just it's such a such a memorable season. Uh, obviously, the Amazon's a great location. I, I think uh, the gender dynamics obviously didn't age that well. 
with the season because it was a men versus women season. But ah, the season's great. I, I, I think I would rewatch it definitely. Here we go. Okay, so I know a lot of people, a lot of people like Survivor per islands. It's probably the best C tier. Uh, yeah, it's what? What can I say? So obviously, Outcast Twist. Uh, I yeah, I I I don't like it when people who get voted out come back into the game. Uh, I I do not like it when people come back into the game. Uh, that's something that I'm not a big fan of. But and also that Lil comes back. Burton, I'm, I I like Burton, but the fact that Lil comes back and Lil is such an annoying character. Yeah, how did I forget Heidi from the sixth season? Yeah, Lil is such an annoying character. I know a lot of people like Rupert. I'm not a Rupert fan. I don't even know how he's a hero. Like Rupert in the in the seventh season comes off as like. A, a jerk you know him like just bursting at uh fair play which say what you want fair play but he just started yelling at him uh, it was like really mean-spirited i mean obviously you get sander who's the first two-time winner from the season that's cool you get fair play who fair play is cool and this the dead grandma lie one of the you know biggest moments from rally television but man it, and just lil is so annoying i I, I actually, I'm a big Andrew Savage fan, so to see Lil flip, and I, I mean, obviously, there's a reason why Lil flips, because Andrew Savage voted her out. I hate seeing Andrew Savage go pre-merge. He's a merge with the season. Just not a, not a good, not a good season. All-Stars. All-Stars is, it, 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 for, you know, when I first heard about All-Stars, obviously, you know, uh, it was a disappointment. It was definitely a disappointment. I think it's I, it's hmm. it's not B. It's oh man. I think All Stars slightly. I think All Stars slightly better than Pearl Islands. Uh it's it's just such a dark season. You get two quits this season, and Sue and Jen. Obviously, Jenna's is more justified, I guess you could say. But it's just like I just wish that Jenna hadn't come out there then if she was going to quit early, so we could get someone else in that season. There's a lot of questionable choices this season, like Amber, Alicia, Jenna. I'm mean, no, not Jenna. Sorry, Alam, Alamber, Amber, even Boston Rob. At the time, was a questionable pick. Nowadays, they did it. Yeah, obviously, but at the time, Rob was a he was a questionable questionable pick because he was a merge boot. He was a merge boot. Not and even in Marquesas, like he he was he wasn't like the best character. I don't think in Marquesas. There's a bunch of just. You know, weird pick. Obviously, and then you get them just all hating on the winners, which I guess at the time is understandable. But then you get the Rob and Lex stuff, and I think Lex comes off as pretty hypocritical because he like he gets really mad at Rob for backstabbing him when he just backstabbed Colby and Ethan, two of his like best friends outside Survivor. But I, no, I don't know. Like the Sue Hawk quit. I like it's it's so weird. Like, I don't know if it's justified or not. It's, like, that weird gray area. I think Jenna's is more justified, but, like, you get two quits in Survivor All-Stars. Like, that's just weird from the, you know, star. I, uh, it's just... And the winner, obviously, Amber. Like, the winner of Survivor All-Stars, Amber, who was, like, probably the 18th pick, because there's 18 people in this cast, was probably the... Eight, her, her or Jenna Lewis was the 18th pick. It's just... Yeah. Vanuatu is an A-tier. <laughs> I, I know a lot of people don't like Vanuatu. I personally really like it. I think Chris Daughtry, I don't know how to say his last name, Chris Daughtry, I don't know, as a winner is a really great winner. Um, that's one of my friends just texted me. Chris Daughtry is a winner is such a good winner. Like the fact that he's able to trick basically all the women into keeping him over, you know, the people that they had a strong alliance with is, is crazy. I think, I mean, Chris Dodger is probably one of the best players out of the first 10 seasons. So that's fun. Um, Rory is a great merch boot. He's so funny. Uh, it's really sad that he goes home early, like, well, semi early. Also, like, the, the that one confessional, I forget who's in the confessional, but there's a literal earthquake during the confessional. Is that's awesome. <laughs> that That's so awesome. And I, you can't, you don't get that nowadays. Uh, what, what, why don't you like Vanuatu? Vanuatu is great, great winner. The Julie Berry stuff with Jeff Probst is pretty funny as well. Palau, uh, mm. 
I don't know where to rank this. I think it would... I, I'm not going to put it in a C. But I don't think it's better... Uh, the winner is probably my favorite winner out of the first 10 seasons. Tom it is a top 10 winner, probably, I would say. Tom's definitely a top 10 winner. Tom Westman and just the way he was able to control Karor is so great. The Oolong stuff with them losing every single challenge is just... It's such a train wreck of a tribe. and But Oolong it has like some of the funniest people. Like James is like... That's his name, right? Yeah, James is super funny. It's just such a train wreck of a tribe. It's fun to watch them. I mean, it, it, it kind of gets sad at the end when Stephanie's the only Oolong member left. And this is the only season without a merge. I, I, I don't even... Like, was there a merge... Like, was there a merge buff? Because Stephanie just gets absorbed in, into the Karor tribe, which is interesting. And, but then she just goes home like two votes later, which is which is kind of anticlimactic. But, I mean, just watching Tom just you know, lead his tribe to victory every single time. It's great. But Palau just seems like a knockoff season be uh, because of the cast bigger and the season just feeling different, in my opinion. I do think Palau feels different. Obviously, the, the stuff at the beginning with two people just getting ejected from the game because they didn't get picked and the school are picked is bad. But I, I think it's here. Hmm. Uh, Guatemala. I think Guatemala is underrated. But in saying that, I still think it's a C tier season. It's step. It's better than also. Mm. Right, I'm gonna put it in B for now. It's the worst B season though. I think Guatemala is underrated, but I'm still gonna put it in uh in the B tier. So yeah, it was absorption, not emerge. Yeah, I know. I, did I say it was emerge? I, if I said it was emerge, I didn't mean to. Uh, I used to like Danny a lot from this season, but watching her in Winners at War has definitely soured my opinion on her. Obviously, you get Stephanie and Bobby John coming back, but they don't even like. It's it's not really even that important because I'm pretty sure the players who have played in this season don't know who Bobby John and Stephanie are because it's the season right after Palat. They film back to back, right? So I don't even think they know who they are. So it's that that, that part's kind of weird. Location's cool though, but it's just the fact that only Danny has came back from the season is insane to me. Like like how has Judd not come back? Judd is such a funny get like that. I have, you, he, like, the part where he's like, she told me I have ADD. Like, that travel council is so funny. But I, I I just can't think of, like, a lot of rememberable moments outside that. But I think as a whole, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. And I think Panama's better than Palau. Uh, give me that. Very, very Pan obviously, one of my favorite players, actually, ever, if you guys didn't know, Terry Deeds is from this season, which Terry Deeds needs to come back because his second chance got completely ruined. Um, oh, yeah, Gary Hawkins, the humble landscaper. How did I, how did I m not mention him? Yeah, he obviously, you know, that's funny. And it also, first ever idol is from Guatemala, and Gary, the landscaper, finds it. That, that part's really great. First ever idol play, but then we get to Panama, which, I mean, that, like, older men's tribe or whatever like the, like it's so weird that there's just four tribes at the beginning younger women older women young men older men like that's such a weird division it, because it's only there for like one tribal and they get swapped into i don't like i don't know why that is that's really weird exile island was pretty cool i think it was a, i know it got introduced in season 10 exile island but i mean just terry one of my favorite players i'm so sad that he didn't make the final tribal because he would have easily just sweeped the jury if he made the final tribal. It's, uh, there's a lot of great characters. Aris is probably the most boring winner ever, I think, right? Aris has to be one of the most boring winners ever, though. I mean, just the entire season was the Terry show. Like, you got, uh, like getting, you know, Terry. It's every single episode, just talking about Terry. And for Aris to win is just really weird. Like, I don't know why they didn't give Like, obviously, Aris got screen time, but he probably should have gotten more screen time. I mean, Sari comes from this season, though. Shane being naked when they er, medically evacuate Bruce is so funny. It's, it's so funny. Uh, and Sari's from this season. That's cool. A lot of just great players. And I'm just... Terry needs to come back. And then I think Danielle is better in this... Uh, better in Heroes vs. Villains. I'm actually kind of glad that they brought Danielle back. Because, like, from this season, she's pretty forgettable. But in, in Heroes vs. Villains, she's, like, way better. So... Good pick there. All right.
Cook Islands. I did not like Cook Islands. I thought it was a C-tier season. Yoquan, great winner. Probably top 15 winner. I don't think he's in the top 10. Um, Yoquan, obviously a great... We get introduced to Ozzy. Yoquan. Um, Jonathan Pinner and Poverty. Which In this season, though, Poverty is like a non-fat. And Candace is fine, I guess. But I think people forget that like Parvi really isn't important in this season. And she almost wasn't even on Micronesia season that she wins. I think that people just think about this and think about, oh, we got Yule, you know, Ozzy, Pinner. But outside of that, like the rest of this cast is like a bunch of nobodies, right? Like the, like there's a bunch of people in this cast that are just complete duds. I mean, Nate's fine, I guess. But a lot of this season were just really boring people in it. So... That's the most backwards episode of Survivor. Yeah, it is. When he gets medically evacuated. But uh, just there's not a lot of fun characters. But the characters that are here are good characters, which is why... Oh, wait. Why is it behind Pearl Islands? Definitely better than Pearl Islands and All-Stars. Well, probably the best C-tier season, but... Mm, it, it has good... It, Seiku is obviously a very funny first food. I think he's a good first food. But season as a whole, mm, it's not that good. I mean... Like, from the, like, I had never even, like, seen the season. I instantly knew that either Ozzy or Yule was going to win. Mm. I think I need to get rid of D tier and just make it um, C to F. Fiji, Survivor Fiji doesn't feel like a season of Survivor. Uh, like, I don't know, like, what I even mean by that. But when I watched... When I watched Sur Survivor Fiji, I didn't feel like I was watching Survivor. It's it's hard to explain. I like it was like this isn't Survivor, and obviously like this season has 19 people in it because if you guys didn't know, one person just quits right before so they couldn't get a backup. So there's 19 people in the season, which is kind of weird. Earl Cole's a great winner, but he's not good TV. And just when I and like obviously this is like the first ever successful idol play with Yami and, and actually the first. Fake idol, but it's just, it's boring though. And I mean, this season, eighteen out of the nineteen castaways, and even if including the person that 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 left the game before it started, nineteen out of the twenty castaways are recruits, and the only one that isn't a recruit gets medically evacuated. I mean, it's in dreams is bad. Yao Man's okay, but just so many forgettable characters from this season, and just. It's and the season is just so easily won by Earl. Like it, it was light work for him. Like I, I like I at least like to see some challenge, you know. But Earl just like dominates the game, and, and it has the worst ever like thing, the worst twist I guess you could say ever, where one tribe literally gets everything like a shelter, food, like shower. I don't even know they had like all stuff there, and one tribe gets nothing. Like who do you think is gonna lose all the challenges? So we get like cool players like Rocky going home early. It just yeah. Yeah, Earl Earl is in dreams. Oh, yeah, I don't like dreams. Uh, he's cool. China S tier. We're in the golden age of Survivor now. Um James, Amanda, uh Todd like I'm so surprised that I mean obviously like outside of Survivor, yeah. I'm so surprised that Todd didn't come back for winners at war. I'm very sad about that. Todd's a great winner. Uh the stuff with Denise, like after the season where it reveals that she actually, like, did get her job back, and she had to, like, return all the $50,000 that Survivor gave her. That's funny. I mean, inside this, PG, look, which was crazy that she didn't come back for, like, another 16 seasons. It's crazy it took her that long to come back. Uh, and obviously, like, it's kind of like a Paganin at the merge, but it's an interesting one. Like, John Ribeiro goes home second in the merge, so the, the kind of shake things up. And then James getting voted out with two idols. It's, it's such great TV. It's such great TV. James going home with two idols. That's great. And I, I like. I also like that they went to China. Like I don't know why. Like if that's important to the season. N there's not a lot of. You don't think Survivor? You don't think it's a S tier? Really? Yeah, Courtney. I, I think it's an S tier. Awesome B or H? Yeah, it it's an S tier for me. It was very enjoyable. Micronesia. I didn't enjoy it as. I know a lot of people love Micronesia. I'm like pretty neutral on it i'm pretty neutral on it i think the winner of the season almost wasn't on this season i i, I find that so funny i how am i putting the b no i'm putting the a what the heck is wrong with me i here's 
you're really gonna make me rewatch Fiji? No. Uh, I mean, like I said, I watched, I rewatched every single one of the seasons besides Thailand. Fans versus favorites. Uh, if you guys didn't know, Micronesia was actually supposed to be an All Star season, but they couldn't get enough people on it, so they had to make it fans versus favorites. I mean, you get amazing characters like Eric. The thing is, though, like a lot of the favorites, are like who are these people? Like they all get voted off pre-merge besides like Eric, and then Eric makes that a horrible move and giving immunity to Natalie, which is amazing TV. I mean, I think yeah, the first person to get voted out with an idol in the pocket, not having two idols, mind you. Uh. Ozzy gets voted off the idol in his pocket. Jason gets voted off the idol in his pocket. It's, the auction from the season is one of my favorite auctions as well. Obviously, it sucks that Pinner goes home pre-merge because of a uh, medical evacuation. Medical evacuation, and James also goes home not pre-merge though, but gets medically evacuated. That sucks, but we both see them in later seasons, so it's okay, I guess. But I know a lot of people put it in S. Me, it's an A tier. Survivor Gabon. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the Chet and Joel feud. How do we get about that? It's so funny when like Joel like hits Chet in the head, and he's like, "Oh, I, I hit my head back there." And he's like, "I don't care." And then he says, "I know." It's so great. Gabon. It's Gabon is such a train wreck of his season, but it's so fun to watch. Gabon's a train wreck of his season, but it is so fun to watch that train wreck happen. I mean, I just want to point out the confessional where the confessional that Ace is giving. And an elephant interrupts him by like walking behind him is so great. Like, and I'm so sad that it can't happen anymore because they don't go to different locations. But that's just such a cool thing to watch for Ace is giving the confessional, and he gets interrupted because an elephant walks behind him, and he's like, "Oh, look at that! It's an elephant. How how elegant!" Thanks for making your forgotten luck. I've been playing levels while watching your videos because I haven't known to play. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I mean, but I mean, you get like it's just such. Like, the cast hate... Everyone hates each other on this season. It, like I said, train wreck of a season. But it's so fun to watch. It's so fun to watch this, like, train wreck happen. I mean, you get sugar... Like, he gets major clunkers in this season. Like, like Randy and, and just... Man, and just... It's so good. Charlie, he's funny that with his antics with Marcus. I mean, I, I think there's... a Corinne is from this season. I think Corinne definitely should have came back. I don't know how she didn't come back for Heroes vs. Villains. I mean, that jury speech she gives about Sugar, where she just says, I hope you get, like, medication whenever for your dead father. Oh, man. You think Gabon's an C tier? That's, I don't know about that. Like, the cast isn't great, but, like, it's so bad, but it's so good at the same time. He, it's so bad, it's good. Obviously, Bob isn't a good winner, but the, the final three is probably the worst final three ever in Survivor history. Like, if I ranked ever... Like, final threes would definitely be at the bottom, but it's so fun. Token Cheens. I think, I think it's an S tier. I mean, JT, Steven, Coach is from this season, and Coach is just an amazing character. I know Corinne eventually comes back, but I'm saying, like, I, I, she could she should have came back for years of She comes back for Cameron, I know that. I mean, Coach is from this season. Tyson's from this season. You get so many good players from this season. I mean, say what you will about JT nowadays. But in Token Cheens, he was a great survivor player. Obviously, that's more questionable nowadays if he's a great survivor player. But in Token Cheens, he's a great survivor player. Coach is such a fun character to watch with like all of his like stuff about him getting captured by Indians or whatever, and they're gonna eat him. It's so funny. Although I felt like Jeff Probst constantly just kind of like you know, like passive aggressively argues with Coach during tribals. It's so good. It's so good. I mean, it also like JT loses a two three in one of the challenges and just and just throws it away. Like, he just, like, he's like, like eh, whatever, and throws away. Oh, that's such a cool moment, I find. Like, I know, like, no one really ever talks about the moment, but I think the moment is, like, really fun to watch. He, like, doesn't care. And he just throws away his tooth. And, like, obviously, they get his S. He gets his tooth back, you know, like, uh, as a trophy, I guess. But, yeah. And Todd, yeah, how did I forget about that? Todd, which, I mean, I know she doesn't want to play Survivor again, but if she wanted to play Survivor again, she would have definitely come back by now. Samoa is... Uh, Man, I don't... It's better than Guatemala. I'm going to put it at a low B. I'm actually going to move Guatemala down to C. So, the thing with Samoa, right? Oh, yeah. The auction where Debbie d donates 50 in $20 increments and says 70 Like I don't know how like that happened, but that's funny. So Here's the reason why Samoa... If Samoa was edited properly, it would probably be an A. But because it's edited... 
to where like the winner of the season, Natalie, I think it's 14 confessionals throughout the entire season. Like, like why? Why? Because they know who's going to win the season. Like Jeff Probst at the end reads the votes. He knows who's going to win. They tell the editors who's going to win. And Natalie, the winner of the season, gets like 14 confessionals. It's the Russell show. Not, I mean, obviously, Russell is great TV. Like, I love Russell. Like, he's great TV. But you need to give the winner more. She's probably like the most under-edited winner ever. I mean, and I get it. Russell's doing all of this. You need to see that happen. But Natalie needs to get more screen. Like, the only thing I remember for her is killing a rat. That's the only thing I remember her doing, killing a rat. Like, and <laughs> like I think they eat the rat. I, I don't remember. I mean, I mean, there is good characters like Dave Ball or whatever. He's funny, but just it's the Russell show the entire season. And Shampo is obviously cool as well. But I mean, and, and if Russell had won this season, by the way, it'd probably be an A. But because the winner doesn't get any content at all, like why would they do that? But if you're, if I'm not like including the winner edit, it's probably a higher B. But still, like you need to give the winner more content than that. All right, all right. Uh, I'm gonna Survivor Heroes versus Villains is not an S tier. It's it's a high A. It's not an S tier. And and here's why. And here's why. The Heroes Tribe in the pre-merge is so frustrating to watch. The Sugar Vote, whatever. The Stephanie Vote, whatever. But voting off Tom? Like, like why? I don't understand. Because, and Rupert comes off as such an idiot this season as well. Like, literally, Jeff calls out Rupert for being an idiot. He's like, he's like, going to Tribal Council sucks. And then Jeff literally calls him out. He says, Rupert, you're the reason why you're at Tribal Council. And he says, I know. Rupert literally says, I know it is. But I gotta stick to my alliance. It's so insane. It's so insane. I, I don't care. You can say it's an S tier all you want. It's not an S tier. The fact that they vote out Tom over James. I'm not saying that's just because I'm a salty Tom fan or whatever. But just the Heroes Tribe is so annoying to watch. I mean, obviously James is a total train wreck this season. And it isn't fun to watch. Like, James' character shifts massively. Like, he's such a... Like, he's, he's an... He's a jerk this season. Like, he's a jerk this season. Like, I don't understand. Like, why? Like, he just turned into a total jerk this season. Like, always being mean. And also, like, I just want... Them voting out who they do vote out pre-merge is so stupid. Them voting out Tom is so stupid because Tom 100% stays with the heroes at the merge. Like, if they don't get rid of Tom, I don't... Like, it doesn't matter. Tom 100% doesn't flip over to the villains. And if they keep Tom then they probably don't they probably don't lose as many challenges and they probably come into the merge with six with a six to four advantage i forgot how many challenges are after Siri and tom get voted off but they there's just no excuse for that at all but the merge it, the merge is a pagani as well banana kid that's funny the merge is a pagani but it's an interesting one kind of like it's like, okay, which hero is going to go home? It's not like, like whenever I watch another episode after the merge, it's not who's going to get voted out. It's which hero is going to get voted out. It's a top A tier, but it's not S. And Nicaragua is an, <laughs> is an F tier. Fabio is fine, I guess. But like Jimmy J quits basically this season and they don't tell you that. I mean, it's funny how Chase Rice is now like a multimillionaire, I think like country singer and he ne has never talked about him being on Survivor after that. Nicaragua is a bad, bad season. Bad season. Bad characters. Cast is major clunkers in the cast. I think it's crazy that Marty hasn't come back. I, I think that's just a testament to how much production doesn't like Nicaragua, that Marty hasn't come back yet. And on the same thing, Redemption Island is slightly better than... Uh, yeah, the only memorable thing was double quit. Yeah, exactly. The only memorable thing, memorable thing was double quit. The fact that there's a double quit sucks. Like, Jeff, you can tell, is super angry when that happens. And Redemption Island is just slightly better. I mean, I don't want to say this season was rigged. Because I, I, I don't want to say this season was rigged. But it was so, so easy for Boston Rob. Like, the Oma Tempe tribe is full, uh, full of idiots. I mean, I guess Andrea is cool, but even this season, Oma Tempe... All they do is listen to Boston Rob. 
like, and I guess Zapatera is fine, but just them, like, they're a bunch of idiots, right? Like, how are you going to let Boston Rob dictate your entire tribe? And the fact that Philip actually thought he had a chance of winning isn't, I mean, Philip's a good TV, but uh, I don't like Philip, man. He's, he's hard for me to watch Philip. It's so, it's bad, man. And I, like I said, I don't want to say the season was rigged, but wow, was it easy for Boston Rob to win this season. He didn't have to do anything. Like, he found an idol. That was cool. But he just took over the tribe, and they just listened to him. And the only two people that don't listen to him get voted off, like, first and third. No, no, first and fourth, I think. I don't know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Such a, like, from after episode two, I was like, okay. After episode two, I was like, okay, yeah. Rob won the season. There's no way he loses now. Like, it, it, Rob would have to have actually, like, gone out of his way to lose this season. They handed him that million dollars. I mean, I guess it's cool now. Boston, Rob, and Amber, you know, they're married. And both the winners of Survivor. I mean, these early 20 seasons up until Philippines and Caramones and Big Clunker after that, it, this is the dark ages of Survivor because Survivor South Pacific, I think, is slightly worse than Redemption Island. Slightly. I mean, Jim Rice hasn't come back, which sucks. That's I mean, I mean Cochran's from this season. And I think that Ozzy... And Coach are probably better returnees than Boston Rob and Russell. I mean, obviously, Coach is great TV, but this is the worst version of Coach. I mean, like, it, them using religion. Okay, I shouldn't say religion. They were, like, having a cult around Christianity. It's it's hard to watch. It's really hard to watch them, like, use Christianity basically as, like, a cult to win the season. Yikes. And the fact that Coach doesn't win also is, like, really weird. Because they don't really explain to us why Sophie wins outside of final tribal council where coach just really doesn't admit to his game. But I feel like they probably should have given more content to Sophie because she, she's a winner. And obviously her, my opinion of her has gone up after winners at war, but I mean, they just, they make Sophie look like kind of like a jerk this season. And for her to win is like really weird. Cause I mean, coach got a winner's edit, like a really big winner's edit. You do you like South Pacific? Really, I, that's I might consider moving South Pacific up to a C, but like I wouldn't watch it again for a while. I it's just really hard to watch. It's it's really boring. And on that note, One World is probably this the the third to worst season. Obviously, Kim, great winner. So happy she came back from Winners at War. But wow, was it boring to watch her win? It is really boring because they just basically hand over the million dollars. I mean, Troy's end is cool in this season. Like, the, this is my island. That's probably... The thing is, though, the the this is my island is the best part of the season. That's kind of bad because it's just like a little quick thing where Troyzen just says, this is my island. You can't beat me. That's the best part of the season. It, yeah. It's just, you know, boring. Uh, Kim, I knew, was the winner through and through from the beginning. They just handed over. The, how, am I, how am I doing? I'm doing pretty good, actually. I love talking about Survivor. Kim's a great winner, so I think Kim is actually probably, like, if you're just looking at seasons, like, I think, I wouldn't say Kim is the best player, but I think Kim's the best winner. And it's just such a boring season. The men's tribe is a total train wreck. Them winning the challenge and going to tribal council, like, oh my goodness. Why? Like, why would you, and, I mean, actually, and, and Colton is major clunker. And he, he comes off as super racist. But the thing is, if you guys didn't know, like, I'm pretty sure this got revealed, like, some time ago. It turns out that Bill actually stole Colton's idol and threw it into the ocean. I, I like, I learned that from, like, probably, I think it was the Survivor Specialist. I forgot who I learned that from. But apparently, I don't know if this is true or not, but apparently Bill actually stole Colton's idol and threw it away, which they didn't tell us about. Um... You know, <laughs> that it's just like, why wouldn't they show us that? That's a big part of the season. Why wouldn't they show us that? It's major clunker. Kim's a great winner, though. In Survivor Philippines, close to... Uh, I think it's slightly worse than the results. I mean, Philippines is still, like, I think fits with the Dark Ages, because it's a dark season. It's a pretty dark... I'm Obviously, Michael Scoopin, say what you will about him now, but, like, he was okay during the season. I think he came off as way too cocky during the season, though. Like, I'm pretty sure 
out of any player besides maybe Russell or Brad Culper or Brad, Brad Culpepper, I think Michael Scoopin might have thought he was going to win the season after it happened the most. Like he was so confident that he was going to win that season. Like I cannot tell you how confident he was. But I mean, we got Malcolm here. Denise is a great winner. The fact that Denise went to every single tribal council is insane. Like Denise never got a break. Denise went to every single tribal council. That is so crazy. And the fact that she wins too is like, wow, like how did that even happen? Uh, I feel horrible for Russell Swan. Like the Matt scene thing was just so bad. Like I feel so bad for the Matt scene tribe. Like that sucks. And like, and I, I feel, I really wanted Russell to do good this season. I wanted Russell to do good this season so bad. And it just didn't happen. He got voted out fourth. I mean, you got Pinner this season. Who is, I mean, Pinner's great TV. No matter what you do, anytime you put him on TV, he's going to be great. I mean, the, oh my, the, the tribal council where Jeff asked, I think her name is Angie. I think, <laughs> wait, Philippines boot order claims my OCD. Glad Denise won, but the season saw the rise of Malcolm Abbey. Denise was awesome. Dude, the, the, the tribal where Jeff asked Angie, what would make this tribe better? And she says, if we could have cookies as one of the best survivor moments ever. And the fact that Malcolm tries to defend her for a couple seconds is crazy. Like, Malcolm tried to defend Angie's answer. Like, like it was like, Angie, what would you do? If, what do you think would make this try better? It's like, if we could have cookies? That's so great. It's, it's so funny. Um, satisfying ending. I think the finale is one of the better finales, actually. And Penner just, I mean, the auction's also really funny as well. Or uh, Obviously, say what you get a will about Michael, but Michael doing doing five hundred dollars just for like crackers and wine it's so good caramoan it has to be f right it has to be f i mean the fa the favorites tribe had philip in it who was one of the most hated survivors and, and, and like the favorites i mean i like corinne but she's not a favorite and the fans aren't even fans i mean okay i think survivor caramoan has the worst pre-merge maybe outside of thailand i think thailand is slightly worse caramon has one of is like the second worst pre-merge ever it is so bad i mean the fact that francesca goes home first twice is cool i guess but i feel really bad for her because her being a first boot just made it so much easier for them and like it, it, even with saying that why is francesca back for a fans versus favorite season she just voted out first why is she back for a fans versus favorite season the cast is so bad it's you know Pretty sad how bad the the favorites tribe is. I mean, I guess watching Cochran win was interesting because he's a very good winner. But it's like they handed him over the season because everyone's just listening to him. All right. Mind you, by the way, if, I just want to let you guys know I love Survivor. Anything above F, I like. Like I, I actually do like anything above F. But man, the cast is just—it's uh, rough. I mean, I think Cochran's pretty reasonable. But besides Cochran and I guess Andrea, I mean, Brandon Hans, obviously, that that was the Brandon Hans thing was really bad. And the fact that the Brandon Hans, like, just like I was just about to say that, the fact that the Brandon Hans meltdown is probably the most memorable frame from the season is really a testament to how. And, and the thing, the season should be good on paper. I mean, Cochran wins, who's probably one of the biggest Survivor fans, like maybe outside of Adam ever. This should be a good season. Cochran wins, but it's just it's edited so poorly. I mean, I think the cast is also bad. The favorites tribe just no one's rememberable from it besides like Reynold, maybe? I don't know. And then the, enough enough fans are here. Blood versus water is an uh, oof. I think it's it's yeah. Pretty pretty good. I mean, the, the fact that like Tyson went. I, I, it's so crazy that Tyson is a winner of Survivor. Like, the fact that Tyson won a season of Survivor is so insane to me. But, I mean, he, he's obviously a great player this season. He's definitely one of the top winners ever, right? I think Tyson's a great winner. Uh, I think Colton quits again this season, which, I mean, that's probably the worst season. I mean, you get some really good players. Like, the fact that Hayden... Oh, yeah. Also, I, Redemption Island works in this season. I would say any other season, it doesn't work. But the fact that it's a blood versus water season... That makes Redemption Island work, it, it because it's with family members. The fact that Hayden hasn't come back, what is like is so strange to me, because Sierra gets credited for the for the rock draw. I think Hayden should get credit for the rock draw, right? I, mm, I think like 
Hayden definitely should get credit for the rock draw. He, he like, told Sierra, like, you're on the bottom of the alliance. Come over here, you have three. Make a big move. Like, that is such a masterful move by Hayden. And I, I'm so disappointed that Sierra gets credit for that because I think Hayden should. And I, also, apparently, I, I know that I'm just talking about Hayden. Hayden, I think, was supposed to be on the Cambodia ballot. But because he won uh, Big Brother, I think, I, I, heard, I don't know where this number came from, but because he won... Big brother, they thought it'd be more like his third chance instead of his second chance. That's so crazy. I mean, let's talk about this. You know, Brad Culpepper for his, you know, like four episode run, he's pretty fun to watch. I think Monica is a way better player this season than she was in uh, 2024. 20, and, and Jervis's season's so great. Like, you're going to the jury. Believe that. Uh, he's he's so funny. I'm, I'm obviously like a whole, like, he's not that good of a player this season. But. But, like, Sierra gets more credit for the Rock Tribe over Hayden. So, yeah, I, I, like I said, yeah, Hayden deserves the credit. But Juris is so great this season. He is so funny. I th I th he doesn't get any votes, which, like, really confused me because I, I thought he'd at least get two votes. But Juris is so fun this season. I'm so glad he came back. I don't know how he didn't come back for All-Stars. And the part where he he is forced to eat a grub again for the gross, like, <laughs> it, for gross food challenge is such a great, um, it's such a great TV movie. I'm only going to be here for a few minutes. That's fine. Enjoy your stay. Blood Brothers Swathered, great. Great winner. Great cast. I mean, it's crazy that Aris came back. Because Aris is one of the most forgettable winners ever. But I think he's actually kind of good on the season. And he brings us back Vetus, which say what you will about Vetus nowadays. I think Vetus was a pretty good character this season. Kagayan is the best newbie. Okay? Not the best team. But I think it's the best newbie cast season. I mean, you have Tony, Wu, Cass, Spencer. And the pre-merge boots are still like pretty. Like Alexis is probably one of the better pre-merge boots. I think Cliff, which R.I.P. Cliff. Uh, even like the players that aren't rememberable, Jeremiah and Jeffer are still really good characters. Uh, Sarah is in this season, which if you think about it, the Cops of Us Alliance has a 100% win rate because Tony wins Kageyan, Sarah wins Game Changes, and Tony wins Winners at War. It's really crazy. I mean, the 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 tribal where Sarah gets voted off is probably one of my favorite tribals ever. It's such a good tribal council. Oh, man. And the fact that Tony wins this season. Like, how, how did Tony win this season? He, he's such a massive player. Like, how I don't know how he was able to convince Wu to bring him to the final three. But he did. And it's so... That was... Keep in mind, if that was any other player, Tony going so. But, but it isn't. And you can't fault him for that. Tony is such a great player. Such a great winner. And the fact that he wins twice is insane. Great player. Great winner. And, uh, yeah, he gets a... Uh, Survivor Kageyan, I think, is the best newbie cast. Sadly, San Juan del Sur, I think, is probably around here. I, no, I don't know if I could say if it's a... Hey, I'm actually going to move Micronesia down to... Uh, there. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think Kageyan has the best newbie cast, right? I think San Juan del Sur, top B. Great winner, Natalie, which is a weird saying because she goes home first and winners at war. I mean, the move where Natalie, like, it's such a, like, a flashy move where Natalie gets out of her chair, goes up to Jeff, and is like, uh, Jackman, did you vote for what I told you to vote for? Is, like, such great, great jury management. Natalie, a very good winner also. Um, it's just, but the outside, it like, after, after Jeremy goes home, I think the season does get pretty slow. I think the pre-merge is pretty good. Mm, actually, I think it's, like, okay. But but after Jeremy goes home, I think the season gets really boring. But but once uh but but the fight and like after the the the, the Baylor blindside is masked a masterful move by Natalie. Skylanders and Skylanders uh Skylanders are my favorite thing. I love this channel even more. Well, thank you, Lee SL Games. But I think it, there's a pretty boring stretch in between where Jack uh where Blaylor gets blindsided and Jeremy goes home. It's did it say best characters in the 30s? This is actually a 20 season. Well, it's 29, but you know, it's whatever. <sighs> Worlds apart. Worlds apart was not a good start for the 30s. I think the winner's good. I, I like obviously he's not Mike isn't a good player because he had to win immunities, but he's fun, he's good TV. Like him winning five immunities is so crazy. I mean, it wasn't that hard outside of Joe, but still. 
And, and the fact that he wins, I think he wins unanimously, right? Like, correct me if I'm wrong. Like, I haven't watched Worlds Apart in a while, but I think he wins unanimously. Will might have gotten one vote, actually. Uh, but I think he wins unanimously. It, but it's so fun to watch Mike. And I think Rodney's a, a funny TV, but it's just, it's a pretty slow scene. And it gets kind of dark as well. I mean, Dan is just such a major clunker. Like, he, ah, um, Dan is, like, he's a pretty bad person. And the fact that he gets, like, that, that, uh, steal a vote or get a vote. I forgot which one it was. It's just crazy. It just Dan is not good to watch. Oh, better characters when they came back through. Okay, got it. But Dan is not fun to watch. Uh, I just it's a boring season. Like I I I think they're good characters, but it's a boring season. Uh, but you know I'm actually gonna move it up. One spot for the the Rodney with the dishes, washing dishes on my birthday. Like that's it's that that part's probably the funniest part of the season, but it's a pretty boring season outside of that. Obviously, you know Joe now with him. Apparently, you know leaks came out of him that he actually used the N word a lot in the season. That's not good. But final vote is six one one. Yeah, wait, Carolyn got a vote. I forgot. I I was like I, I thought it was like pretty close to unanimous, but yeah, thanks for telling me. That. Survivor Cambodia. Yeah. Great, great winner in Jeremy Collins. Yeah, Mama C. Idol plays great. That's pretty fun, too. And the fact that So goes home first is like so great. Like, So seemed like such a good player. But Cambodia is easy S tier. Uh, Jeremy Collins, great winner. I mean, the cast is so good. Outside of Monica, I, I have no idea how Monica came. Like, it's so weird. Like I, I, I thought Monica was a pretty forgettable character from Samoa, but outside of Monica, I, I think all of them are good. Obviously, say what you will about Jeff Varner. I mean, but back then, I wanted to see Jeff Varner come back. I mean, say what you will about. We'll get to Jeff Varner in a minute, but in this season, he was really actually funny to watch. I think he was fun to watch. I mean, I can't think of one boring person besides Monica. I mean, even Vetus, who was the first boot, was pretty fun to watch that first episode. It, it's just it's such a good season the cast is one of the best casts ever i mean all because the fans voted for it and you know obviously it's going to be a good cast right i mean I, it's so crazy uh great merge and season and also the idol play from wentworth so great such great tv i mean andrew savage flipping off abby maria is is so great i love that i but I, obviously I, the idol play from kelly Great. The fact that Kelly came back, I thought she was pretty forgettable from San Juan Sur, but I'm so glad she came back now because obviously now we know she's a great player, which I think just shows you. I think Edge of Extinction in Cambodia show you that there are a lot of good players who went out in the who, that went out in the merge just because. I mean, they went out pre-merge just because they got charged. I mean, oh, if we're talking about Kelly, I want to talk about her dad real quick, Dale from San Juan Sur. Dale's not a bad survivor player. Uh, Dale was just he. I, Dale was you know a good survivor player. I think he just got swap screwed. Yeah, at least he made it to the jury. It's such a good line. At least he made it to the jury and then flipping her off. That's great. I mean, Keith wins immunity against Joe. That's so weird. Like Keith, like a fifth year old, won immunity against Joe. That, it's so funny. Jeremy, great winner. I, I think one of the best final three is probably out of Spencer. Ta Tasha is kind of a clunker this season. She kind of became unlikable. This season, which is weird because she was a great player, I think, in Kageyan. I have no idea what happened in Cambodia, but a good final three in Spencer. And I think it just goes to show how good of a player Jeremy was that season because Spencer got no votes. No votes in that final job council. I think that just goes to show how good of a player Jeremy was this season. All right. Co wrong. I know a lot of people like this season. It's just not, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. So I, 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 it's it's fine, it's fine. I'm about there. I mean, Michelle's not a good one. I don't. I, I know you're like, ha, ah, Queen Michelle, Queen Michelle. I like all the scenes. I can't count how many I've seen, but I'm still gonna watch Survivor regardless after the pandemic before. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and also season 40 is around the cor 41s in the corner. Cool. Michelle's not a good winner. I, I I know like people are like, ha, ah, Queen Michelle, you know whatever. But Michelle is not a good winner. I have like, and the thing is, they don't really tell us why Michelle won. Usually when we like we see the winner win, we're like, okay, this is why they won. I can't really point out why Michelle won, which is weird. And obviously the medical had the most robbed winner. 
Battle of the season was Scott Pollard, Blindside and Tie, not using Super. Yeah. I mean, the Super Battle was cool, but just the story. So obviously the Medivax, Caleb, Joe, and I'm coming up blank on the other person. Neil. I don't know how, why Neil doesn't give his idol to Aubrey. Like, that's so weird why he doesn't. And then him getting voted off. And I don't like, I don't like the twist. Well, I mean, obviously it doesn't matter that Neil gets voted off. But I don't like the twist where you take a juror out of the game. I, I think that Jeff thought that Aubrey would win that challenge. I honestly think that Jeff honestly thought that Aubrey would win that challenge and get rid of one of the jurors like Scott or Jason. So they made that, but Michelle won it. So they're like, oh, okay. And, and the, the, the thing is, the reason why we had a new tribal council format is because Michelle won. Wait, they allow 16 and up now? I don't know that. I should probably start. I should probably start playing. But, I mean, it's just, it's a good season. It has a good cast, but the story is all over the place. The medevacs obviously affect the season. It's not a bad season. It's not a bad season. And I think that a lot of people, like, hate on Caleb, but Caleb was definitely making the merge in this season. And I think he just got, he just got swap screwed in, in Game Changers. But, it, I mean, it's just really bad Meta I mean, Aubrey probably wins the season if Joe doesn't get medevaced, right? And I think that that just goes to show that Michelle isn't a good player because if Joe doesn't get medevaced, Aubrey, I mean, not Aubrey, Michelle most likely gets voted out like the final four, right? Yeah. Bad. Bad. I don't know why everyone says Millennials versus Gen X is like top 10 season. I think it was, you know, B, right? Like It, it, it could have gumped A. We'll see. Adam is a good player, but I, I thought he was... I know a lot of people like Adam. I thought he was kind of annoying to watch. I, I, like, and obviously, it's, the, the, it's very unfortunate what happened to him. I'm not knocking him because of that. But I just thought Adam was kind of annoying. And I, I don't really know what it is. But I, don't like, I kind of like the new Final Trouble format. I think it's fine. But like I said, the reason why it got changed is because Michelle won her season. I think that Adam was annoying to watch, like I said. Like, I, don't, I can't really point out what it is, but... I thought it was kind of annoying to watch. Uh, Pre-merge is pretty good, though. I mean, for the most part, like, obviously one of the most forgettable first boots ever. And Rachel, I think that was her name. I don't even remember her name. Uh, I mean, then we get the rock draw, though. Actually, you know, the rock draw is going to move up there. Rock draw, Aubrey wins if the producers didn't introduce the jury vote off. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. That rock draw was so good. So, and I really, I feel so bad for Jessica because I think she was like one of the only people that was like really opposed to doing a rock draw. And Jessica probably makes it pretty far this season if she doesn't get rocked out. I mean, David this season is really good. Adam is a good winner. Like I said, annoying to watch though. I, I think Hannah's pretty underrated. I think Hannah's pretty underrated. I actually kind of like Hannah. Obviously, Michaela, her vote off is so good. Like her, where she like literally, she makes Jeff stop reading the vote so she could like talk to Jay Black. Did you do that? Him. Just so, he's so cold blooded. Jay's like, yeah. I did it. It was me. That's so cold blooded. He was like, "Yeah, it was me. I did it." And, and Michelle, I mean, did I say Michelle? Sorry, Michaela getting voted out. Ah, oh, so good. Rock drop was so good. Fake idol Jay. That's good. I mean, so good. I mean, I think the youngest survivor ever. I think Will's the youngest survivor ever, right? But he's pretty forgettable. We get Zeke in this season, which we'll, we'll get to Zeke later, obviously. A good season. Ah, game changers. Yeesh. Okay, look, I think it's a low B. Yeah, did you just said, yeah, I did. Okay, look, the pre merge before Jeff Varner is also the cast, a lot of questionable choices. Michaela, even though I, I love Michaela, questionable choice for Game Changer. Zeke, questionable choice for Game Changers. Jeff, like, Game Changer, really? I think I don't think Ty is a Game Changer. Tony's a Game Changer, but I don't know if I'd say JT's, a, uh, obviously, JT's a good player. But is he a game changer? I don't know. I think this would have actually been a pretty strong returning player cast if it wasn't called Game Changers. I think the fact that it's called Game Changers is really like, like I think they just were trying to figure out a name for this. Guy. Like I think they got the cast and they're like, okay, what do we name it? And like a Game Changers. It was like, like Sarah isn't a game. I mean, I think, I think now after Survivor Forty, you could. It's a good debate if Sarah's a game changer, but before. Game changer. It's like, no, Sarah's not a game changer. I mean, half, more than half this cast isn't a game changer. So it's like, wh why? But I think it actually played I mean, the Malcolm tribal, 
which uh, like obviously like such a saying that Malcolm goes home so early. But my goodness, is that a great tribal council? The Malcolm tribal council. Wow, it's so good. And, and the Tony vote off, the Sierra vote off, and, and Sandra finally getting voted off. It's so good. It's so good. I mean, the JT vote off, <laughs> so good. But. But then we get to the Jeff Varner stuff, and I think before Jeff Varner, the season was really strong. But once we get to the Jeff Varner stuff, it just it really it becomes super dark. And then the thing is, after the Jeff Varner stuff, they kind of just forget about it. Like they don't really talk about it at all after it. And like they talk about it for the beginning of the first ep- the episode after that, but it's like after that, it's just it never gets brought up. And the fact that like like Jeff is just like okay with you know Varner, like they just talk like it was just a, a friendly debate. At, like in the reunion, it's so awkward. The Jeff Varner stuff with Zeke, it's so bad. It's so bad to watch. But after it, I think it kind of gets better. But after obviously the Jeff Varner stuff, it it just it turns the season really dark. But I think before it was really good. But because the pre-merge is shorter than the post-merge, I think it has to go around here. Uh, great winner. I think the 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 winner is great. Sarah's a great winner. So. Yeah. And say hi to Sierra to me. And, and watching Tony's vote off now is so funny. Now that he's a two-time winner. Yeah. And let's go to Heroes versus Heroes. First of all, who who named this season? Who who named Heroes versus Heroes versus Hustlers? Right. It's that's such a weird name. I don't understand. Like, the, uh, this is the reason why I feel like Survivor should go to more places than Fiji. You get weird things like Game Changers, Heroes versus Hustlers, Millennials versus Gen X. It's like. Why? Why are we doing this? You know, but I think it's a pretty good season. I didn't voice crack there. Sorry about that. I think a lot of people hate Ben. Obviously, I don't think his win is. The, I don't think he's the best winner. Obviously, right? I mean, he needs idols the, his entire way. But I, I, I think he's fun. I, I think it's fun to watch Ben find idol after idol after idol, and him doing his Ben bombs. I, it, I think that's really funny. It's really cool to watch. His Ben bombs are like so great. I, wait. I'm going to push it above Cole Wrong, honestly. But, I mean, outside of that, though, I think Devin is a pretty underrated character. I think Devin is is pretty fun to watch. That The the uh, the final episode, I think, is pretty good, actually. And the fact that Ben almost wins immunity but puts his U the wrong way, that, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty fun. Yeah, Ben is one of the worst winners, 100%. Ben is 100% one of the worst. I think my opinion on him went slightly up after... Winners at war, but still, him needing idol after idol obviously isn't a good uh, thing. Oh my god, Scry Jack just uploaded the video. Wow, okay. Um, it's obviously not good, but it's good TV. I don't think the season overall would like play out good in the Survivor sense, but I think it had pretty good TV. I mean, the Allen vote off is so good. Like, the Detroit Hollaback Baby, the, it's so good. Joe is such great TV. Man. Oh, Monkey. God. Just donated five bucks. Thank you very much, Monkey God. That goes straight to uh to St. Jude's Hospital. So thank you very much, Monkey God. Allah. Uh, thank you for that. It's really great. Thanks you. I think it isn't good Survivor, but it's good TV. Yeah. Ghost Island. <laughs> right there. Here's the thing. Ghost Island. Love Dominic. We'll get to window. I love Dominic. Dominic is such great TV. But outside of that, I mean, the pre-merge is, is is so unfortunate. I mean, the fact that James Derwin gets voted off second, it's like, why? Like, they, they paint him out to be like a like mid-merge boot. He's second person voted out. And, and the, the Malolo, one of the worst tribes ever. And it, it, it's so sad when the VD goes to Malolo, when the tribe swap happens, it's so unfortunate. I mean, seeing Stephanie get voted off, seeing James Lynn get voted off, Oh, it, it's kind of hard. I mean, even Brendan, who was probably going to be like an early merge, but anyway, it's like, dang, it, it's it's really sad watching like all these good characters get voted off super early. And I think the Ghost Island twist was good in theory, but the way it played out was really bad. Like, I really hate these islands, the Ghost Islands, I don't the idols, you know, whenever you go there and come back, instantly a target on you. Like, it, it's not even your fault sometimes. It's not even your fault sometimes. But the, like, it, I mean, the James Derwin, like, lie, one of the worst lies ever in Survivor, like, that's a really bad lie. But the thing that knocks this season for me, them, I don't like Wendell. And there's a reason. 
I think Dom. I don't care what people say. I think Dominic was. It, people say Dom and Wendell, but it was Dominic. It was it was Dominic. Like you hardly like yeah. Wendell had some input, but Dominic was making big move after big move. I think that fake idol move was like really good, but it, it isn't good in the eyes of the jury, which is. Is bad. And Michael, he great player, but gets voted out. I think the bluff where Michael says the James Idol can work on two people is one of the greatest bluffs in Survivor history. It's it's pretty believable. But the fact that Dominic doesn't win, it just it angers me, man. I, this is the first time ever, probably, where I was actually angry that someone didn't win. Besides, like Russell, I was so mad that Dominic didn't win. I mean. Just the entire season, it's painted that Dominic is making the big moves while Wendell's like in the second in command. And, and I think that, like, it's just, wow. It's Dominic should have been on Winners at War. I think, the thing is, Dominic had five locked votes coming to the Tribal Council. And he just needed one more, and he just couldn't get that one more. He just couldn't. And, and, and even then, if Dominic goes to final Tribal Council against anyone else, he easily wins the game. He sweeps the jury almost unanimous vote. He wins every single time against all, and the only player that he doesn't win against is Wendell. And even then, he gets a tied jury vote with Wendell, where Lauren is it. And once Lauren was the final jury, I was like, it's over for Dominic. I, I, I find his game just so impressive. He, he's basically a dominant, dominant, dominant. I, my words are getting sore now. He's basically dominant the entire season. Except for like the, 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 the pre swap, I find his game so impressive, but just bad twist and stuff. Predictable winner, so yeah, it uh, it gets here. Survivor David versus Goliath, easy yes, right? I, I David versus Goliath is probably is like probably the best. Uh, actually, I'm actually gonna no, it's one of the better. Uh, newer seasons. Uh, first of all, good twist. Even though, like, even though it's a good twist, I think like the tribes are so good, but it instantly, it instantly makes you want to root for the Davids. You know what I'm saying? Like, it instantly makes the Goliath tribe look like the bad guys. You know, but it's still great. The John Hennigan blindside is one of the best blindsides ever. The fact that the minority splits the vote and 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 gets one of the people in the in the majority voted off. It's such a, it's such a masterful move by Christian and uh, and Nick. Nick is such a good winner as well for the season. I, I'm so glad that David won the season. I don't know, Fire. The majority is splitting the vote. I mean, just seeing their faces when I don't know if I gets played and like seeing that first John vote, it's so good. Obviously, very unfortunate that Pat gets uh, uh, medically evacuated, but if we ever get a first boot season, which I actually think is... Kind of unlikely now. He, he's a lock for that. He is a lock for that. I mean, just great move. Great winner. A Christian is one of the best casting choices ever in Survivor history. It, great cast. The only, like, kind of clunker I see was, like, the second vote. I think her name was Jen. I mean, then Natalia Blindside, where she's like, shut up, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And Alex's like, it's just a game. It's uh, such good TV. Uh, I loved watching this season. One of the better seasons in recent memory. Then we get to Edge of Extinction. I think Edge of Extinction is better than most people give it credit for. Uh, obviously, the winner, Chris Underwood, is the worst winner in Survivor history. Right? I think that's really easy. But the thing with Chris Underwood is that once he came back into the game, he did everything he could have possibly done to win that season. And I found that really impressive with him. Even though Chris, obviously, worst winner in Survivor history, he got voted out third. But once he comes back to the final five, he did everything everything he could have done to win the season. Rick Devins is also great TV. Uh, and Kelly Wentworth is great. I mean, David coming back, that's great. A really good cast. And I think on a rewatch, when you rewatch, Edix, I think Edge of Extinction will always go up in your rankings whenever you rewatch it because you know you know what the twist is. The Edge of Extinction, I mean, I might actually put, a, I'm going to put Edge of Extinction in a higher V. I mean, that obviously it's you know, sad that Devin's loses. I mean, it's so funny when like Ron gives him that thing and he's like, Oh, you want to be look, making me look stupid. My kids think I'm an idiot. It's so good to be. The really only like boring person are probably the final two. Well, the two of the people in the final three. Uh, I think her name is Julie. I honestly forgot her name. And, 
I forgot the other people besides Chris in the final two because they were that boring. Uh, well, I actually forgot his name. I, I cannot remember his name. But the thing is, I think Chris played a better game, I think, than Julia and Gavin. That's his name. Julia and Gavin. I think that was his name, right? I think Chris played a better game in like 12 days or whatever than Julia and, and, and Gavin did in 39 days. I don't know. I, I actually no. I don't think that's true. I don't think Wardog came with all the strategy that Chris did. Chris like got Devons to convince him to give him half his idol. That's good. He got Lauren to convince him to play an idol for him. Yeah, Julian Gavin. Uh, he got you know Lauren to convince him to play an idol for him, and then he did. And then he did fire making against Devons. I, I think he could have done everything he could have possibly done to win that season. And he isn't trying to be higher on my winner rankings. He was trying to win the season, and I I think that's. I think he's actually he's definitely the worst winner, but I don't think he's the worst player. I, look, out of all the winners, I don't, he's the worst winner, but I don't think he's the worst player out of the winners. I, I really want to see I really want to see Chris Underwood come back for like Heroes versus Villains or something because I want to see how good of a player Chris actually is. Okay, Island of the Idols. This is a hard one to talk about, obviously with the damn stuff. I, I think I put it higher than most people do. I think... I think... Look. Look. I'm about to defend the heck out of... Island. I think it's a bottom beast season. Before the merge, I think Island of the Idols has... I'm sorry, Island of the Idols has one of the best pre-merges. Easily one of the best pre-merges, right? Like, it's so... The Ronnie vote-off is so good. The Molly blind side is so good. Uh, Just... I mean, the, the Chelsea one is a bit questionable. I, I That's the one that I thought was... Look, yeah, we all knew that Tommy was going to win from episode one. But he, that doesn't mean he's a bad winner. Tommy's a great winner. Like, I like Dan stopped by the season. That, uh, yeah, obviously. I think it's an A tier if Dan wasn't there, which is really unfortunate. I mean, the Vince blind side. Like, the Chelsea one was a bit questionable for me. I think that... I think that Missy did that just to make a big move, which way way too early to do that. The fact that Krishma, that the, the Tom gets voted over Krishma, actually really upset me at the time. No, no, I I don't care if it was like Tommy is a top fifteen winner. He controlled that season so masterfully. Uh, he's a great player, I think. But then we get the Dan stuff, and I'm actually going to move it down a bit. I the Dan stuff is just really unfortunate. I I think yeah. It definitely brings the season down, but like if you don't look at the dance stuff, it's really unfortunate because Kelly gets voted out with two idols in her pocket. That should have been such a like a, a big moment in the Survivor history. But the fact that obviously, you know, dance stuff happens just makes that go down. You know, it, 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 you don't focus on that, which is really unfortunate because Kelly gets voted out with two idols in her pocket. But also the cast is so good. I mean, Jamal is such an elegant speaker. Tommy, I think, was a good casting choice. Chelsea, Missy, Aaron. Basically, everyone outside of Dan was a good casting choice. And even at that, they couldn't have—they couldn't have like you know knew that Dan was going to do what he did. And I mean, I think it does look pretty bad on production with with what what Dan happened. But I think outside of Dan, maybe maybe not Molly. I thought Molly was kind of boring. Everyone on the cast was a great casting choice. It's weird that Jack is also part of the jury, but I think that's because they were doing that just in case Jan got Dan got ejected. Uh. But I think the cast is so good during this season. And it's just, it's so sad that, uh, that it gets, yeah. All right. Winners at War is the best season of Survivor. Right? <laughs> First of all, Winners at War, I think, I don't think people even debate this. Winners at War has the best cast ever. Right? Like, I don't think that's even debatable. Winners at War, best cast ever. Uh, and a lot of players like Sophie went up and like I don't think Sophie's like after Winners at War. I think Sophie's a great player. I think Sophie's a really good player after Winners at War happens. Um, it the only thing about this season that is kind of rough for me is that all of the old schools go home pre-merge. But there is a reason for every single one of them getting voted out. Like it's not that they are just targeting old schoolers, right? Like there's a reason why they went home. But it is kind of sad to see the old schoolers go home. Uh, but I mean, the th and the season had the best possible outcome ever in Tony winning. What do you mean no one did anything? Tony was so good during the season. It was so fun for him to watch this se during the season. I mean, that confessional where he gets extorted is so good. 
And even though Tony was a pretty dominant winner, like moves still got made during the season. I think Michelle was way more fun to watch in the season. What do you mean no one did? I don't understand. Like, what do you mean no one did anything? Every single person in the season did something, like, besides maybe Amber, right? And I think this, I think Edge of Extinction actually works in this season because it's all winners. Like, you don't want to see them go home, right? It's all I think Edge of Extinction is probably, Winners at War is the only season where Edge of Extinction works. I, I It's, it, it works. I mean, we get to see Kim back. We get to see Sophie. We get to see Tony back. We get to see Boston Rob come back, who, like, Boston Rob has said so many times that he's never going to play Survivor again. I, I, but I think the thing with this season is, I think probably this is probably like the end of an era. I, I, I think that this is like a lot. I think a lot of players, this is the last time playing. I think this is like Boston Rob and Amber's. Last time playing. I think this is Tyson last time. This is probably Ethan's last time playing. Right? A lot of these players is I mean Tony. And even though Tony's still like in the grand scheme of things a, a pretty recent winner, I think Tony's done now. I, I think he's done now, which is really sad because Tony's one of my probably my favorite character ever. But a lot of the players, it just really felt like an end of an era for Survivor. It was I mean, I, I actually kind of like the fire tokens and like them trying to find the fire tokens on edge of extinction was so funny i mean you know tyson calling rob like an old like chap or whatever that was so funny i mean every, like tony's ladder is such a good scene with his ladder every single player is like really fun to watch this season and i think a lot of players the only player i think that went down in my opinion is danny but I think Kim is still probably one of the best players ever. I think she was the only one that was able to figure out that Tony was like the main threat. But no one like sat up there, which is really sad. Uh, Nick is good this season. I'm so, so glad that Wendell got voted out. Yeah, Amber, Rob, Ethan, Parvati, Tony, Tyson, Kim, Yule. I think they're all done. I think Sophie actually probably might come back. I think after like before before the season, Sophie, you like we're like okay, yeah, Sophie's never come back. But after the season, Sophie actually is like I actually like Sophie this season, which is strange because I, I I kind of hated her in South Pacific. But I I think a lot of players from this season are went up in my opinion. And obviously, it was sad seeing Ethan go home. I think like uh, uh, Tyson was my winner pick, so it was sad seeing him go out fifth. But. It's such a great gameplay, even though it was a dominant win, basically, by Tony. Seeing Cops R Us again, I mean, it was such an emotional scene where, where uh, Sarah loses fire against Tony. And even though, going in that episode, I knew Tony was winning, because I, I heard it spoiled. I, I They spoiled it for me that Tony was winning. Sarah got so close, like, for a couple seconds. I thought, even though I knew Tony was going to win, I thought, like, Sarah could win. And it was such an emotional tribal council. Also, why she mentioned I know pocket. I I think that they probably didn't know about the rules of Edge of Extinction. So I thought like I, I think that like they probably didn't know about the rules of the Edge of Extinction. So like you know they're like I don't I don't think Sophie knew that she could come back with her idol. I don't, I don't think she knew that her idol would be able to work. I mean the Queen Slayer move where where Denise gets rid of sandra great trouble council i was scared for a second i thought tony was going home the only thing that like is really bad about this season is that wendell stays for a while that like it's the only thing that's bad about the season i can think of that wendell stays because i don't like wendell there are so many ch i think I, I was really hoping that wendell went out where poverty went out but but still it's, it's such a good season of survivor i really liked it i think it's the best season honestly <laughs> look yeah been throwing the game made no sense but Ben's story, Ben throwing the game for Sarah, that like perfectly wrapped up Ben's story. Because Ben's a soldier, you know, you know, he he gave his life up for America, or whatever, right? Like, like he was the he was okay with putting his life down to for our country, right? So I think like I I think that Ben laying his like life in the game for Sarah is perfect for his story. I I think like that was a perfect end to Ben's story. So I actually didn't mind it that much. I I didn't mind it that much. I think that was a perfect end to Ben's story. Because I don't think Ben's ever going to play again, right? Uh, like, Ben's definitely not ever playing again, I don't think. But that was a perfect wrap to Ben's story. Him laying his life down for Sarah to win the game, which, I mean, she doesn't go home next. But still, 
And yeah, the Wendell and Michelle beef is weird because like, do they hate each other? Do they not? It's like it's a weird, a fun dynamic though. I think Winners at War best cast probably best season in my opinion. But yeah, actually, let me make. I made a. I made a my own separate tier for worst season. So I'm gonna make a separate tier for the best season. So let me do that real quick. I, oh hey, not the Knights of Skylands. You're, you're kind of. Late. We're about to wrap things up, but it's fine. And I really hope that we get a good season in season 40. One, apparently it's going to be only 26 days, 18 players. I don't care how many days there are. I just want it to be a good season of Survivor. Um, but yeah, so if we want to go over this real quick, uh, best season, Winners at War. Worst season, Thailand. Uh, we got, and by the way, anything above C, I like. Like, even though I said there's a bunch of problems, I still like watching all these seasons. It's just that there's more problems with these seasons than this tier. There's more problems with this tier than that tier. So, this tier, it sucks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Oh, like, out of 40 seasons, only seven that I actually hate. That's not bad, really, right? I mean, so, I, I like I said, I love Survivor. I think that Survivor is one of the most consistent shows ever, especially with there being 40 seasons. Uh, you know, you can disagree with me however much you want. Thanks, William Ed Edis, for being here the entire time. Uh, you're a G, my guy. You know, <laughs> talking to me about Survivor. I'm so glad that someone else loves Survivor just as much as I do. Uh, but, yeah, that is basically it. The worst season is Thailand, so don't watch that. The best season is Wonders at War. Um, I'm going to go on vacation a couple days to Alabama, which is like really far away. <laughs> I'm going to be watching Survivor the entire time there. Thank you for doing this. This was so much fun. Yeah, it was so much fun having you here to, to talk about it. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, Yeah, the, this little ranking I did right here. If you guys want to see more Survivor videos, uh, tell me, I guess. This was pretty impromptu. I think Chris is coming back season 41. No, the they're, they're rumored cast for Survivor. Actually, you know what? Uh, you guys want to look it up? I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys. Actually, mm, I don't know. Will I? Here, actually, well, real quick. I will, but I'm going to do something real quick. I'm just going to do do that. Is that? So, uh, I'm going to, you want, know I'll show you guys. I've been here since the start, but I haven't watched the show. So, I was like, oh, well, thank you, Pan Pancake and.